President Trump has rolled out his $4.4 trillion budget proposal with a big boost for systems that serve planes, trains, and automobiles. It is for the fiscal year that begins in October. The president met today with state and local officials to discuss his ideas on aging roads, bridges, and transit systems. We're going to make our infrastructure uh, modernized, and uh, we're really way behind schedule. We're way behind other countries. We always led the way for many, many years. Then, a number of decades ago, it slowed down, and over the last eight years and 15 years, to be honest, it's uh, come to a halt. The plan spending cuts are mostly negated by last week's deal that includes huge spending hikes for this year and the next one. But Democrats, including Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, took aim at the president's priorities and the projected deficit of roughly $1 trillion. Just six weeks after slashing taxes on the wealthiest and the biggest corporations, after creating a massive deficit, who does the president ask to pay for this? Middle class and older Americans. He slashes education, environmental protection, and Medicare and Medicaid. We'll take a closer look at the president's ideas on infrastructure right after the news summary. In the day's other news, Wall Street followed up Friday's rally and regained more of last week's losses. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was up 410 points to close at 24,601. The Nasdaq rose 107 points and the S&P 500 added 36. All three indexes are still down roughly 7 percent from the highs they reached just last month. The U.S. Senate is beginning a rare open-ended debate on immigration this evening. President Trump's plan includes a pathway to citizenship for those brought to the U.S. as children without documentation. It would also restrict legal immigration and fund a border wall. Democrats say the plan is a non-starter. In Russia, investigators combed through wreckage for clues today after Sunday's plane crash near Moscow. All 71 people on board were killed. The Russian jetliner went down in a field shortly after taking off. Officials say they have recovered two black boxes that could shed light on what happened. Both flight data recorders were found and sent to be decoded by the Interstate Aviation Committee. The committee will publish the decoded transcript on its official website later on. We have already found over 700 fragments. You have seen that we have already sent away a plane carrying the first load of 453 fragments of the victims. Investigators say they don't know yet the cause, but they have ruled out a terror attack. There is word that South Africa's ruling party is demanding that President Jacob Zuma resign within 48 hours. That is according to the state-run South African Broadcasting Corporation. Zuma faces a bevy of corruption allegations, but he's denied all wrongdoing. An executive committee of the ruling African National Congress met today to decide Zuma's fate. Power has been restored to parts of Puerto Rico that lost it Sunday night. An explosion and fire at an electric substation caused the outage. Officials said that the northern part of the island was affected and crews worked through the night. The U.S. territory is still struggling to restore power everywhere, five months after Hurricane Maria. The National Portrait Gallery unveiled two new works today, formal images of former President Barack Obama and First Lady Michelle Obama. The Obamas were there for the ceremony in Washington alongside their painters, Kahindi Wiley and Amy Sherald. Mrs. Obama said she hopes the portraits will speak to future generations. I'm also thinking about all of the young people, uh, particularly girls and girls of color, who in years ahead will come to this place and they will look up and they will see an image of someone who looks like them. I know the kind of impact that will have on their lives because I was one of those girls. Wiley and Cheryl are the first black artists to receive a presidential portrait commission from the National Gallery. And finally, highlights from day three at the Winter Olympics in South Korea. More gold on the slopes and skis and a little bit of history. Mirai Nagasu became the first American woman to land a triple axle, a turn in Olympic figure skating. 
The Canadians took the gold in the team figure skating event, while the U.S. won bronze. And American Jamie Anderson clinched gold in slope-style snowboarding. She also won at Sochi in 2014.